You see 30 people around a fire, laughing, sharing food, safety in numbers, right? Wrong. Dead wrong. In 72 hours, half of them will be sick. In a week, they'll be fighting over scraps. In two weeks, they'll be dead or scattered. And you? You almost joined them. Let me show you the math on why staying so low or very, very small is your only real shot at not becoming a statistic with a name scratched into a wooden cross. It's the lie of safety in numbers. Here's what they don't tell you in those feel-good post-apocalypse movies. Groups are resource black holes. You've got 30 people? Congratulations! You now need 30 times the water, 30 times the food, 30 times the medicine. And here's the kicker. You don't have it. Nobody does. So what happens? Rationing. Tension. Theft. Then someone gets sick. Then someone gets stabbed over a can of beans. Then the whole thing collapses like a badly built shelter in a windstorm. Let's do the math. One person needs about 2 liters of water a day. 30 people? 60 liters. That's 15 gallons. Daily. You're not finding that in a creek. You're not boiling that much over a campfire. You're spending every waking hour just keeping people hydrated while your own canteen runs dry. Add food. Say, 2,000 calories per person per day. That's 60,000 calories. You'd need to hunt a deer every single day just to break even. Spoiler, the deer are gone. So are the squirrels. So is your patience. Groups eat themselves. Literally. Then there's the noise problem. Or, as I call it, why you're a dinner bell. 30 people don't whisper. They cough. They argue. They snore. They cook. They exist. Loudly. And in a world where silence is survival, noise is a neon sign that says, free supplies here, come kill us. Sound travels. A campfire? Visible for miles. Voices? Audible across valleys. The smell of cooked food? It drifts. And every desperate scavenger, raider, or worse, within a 10-mile radius, is now heading your way. You've got 30 people to defend a perimeter you can't even see in the dark. You've got two guns, maybe three. Four people awake on guard duty. The rest are asleep, useless, and about to wake up to a machete. Solo, you're a ghost. You move quiet. You cook underground or not at all. You don't leave tracks. You're not worth the effort. Groups, they're worth the effort. They're always worth the effort. Finally, let's talk about the disease math, the exponential doom. One person gets sick in a group of 30. Let's say it's flu. Not the end of the world, right? Wrong. In close quarters, shared shelters, shared water sources, shared everything, that flu spreads to five people in two days, then 15, then everyone. Now you've got 30 sick people, zero functional guards, and a camp that smells like death because two of them didn't make it and nobody had the strength to bury them. The math is called r naught. It's how many people one sick person infects. In a tight group, r naught is three. Maybe four. That's exponential. One becomes four. Four becomes 16. 16 becomes everyone. You don't have antibiotics. You don't have a hospital. You have dirt and hope. And hope doesn't cure dysentery. Solo, you get sick. You recover or you don't. But you don't take 29 people down with you. You're not a plague vector. You're just one fragile human doing your best not to die alone, which statistically is better than dying in a pile of other people's germs. Here's the ugly truth about survival. People are great, right up until the moment they're not. Picture this, a group of 30 people, You've got 30 different survival instincts, 30 different moral compasses, and 30 different breaking points. Someone is going to snap. Someone is going to steal. Someone will eventually decide that their kid's life is worth more than yours. And you know what? They're right. But that doesn't help you much when they're holding a knife to your throat for the last jar of peanut butter. The math here is simple probability. The more people you add, the higher the chance that one of them is a sociopath, a coward, or just desperate enough to do something you can't come back from. You can't vet 30 people. You can't watch 30 people. Let's be honest, you can barely trust one person. So why are you betting your life on 29 strangers? A small group? Two, maybe three people you'd literally die for and who'd die for you? That's a survival unit. That's manageable. 30? That's just a mob waiting for a reason to form. But let's say you solve the trust problem. Now you have to eat. 
30 people strip an area clean in weeks. Every deer, every edible plant, every last scrap, gone. Then the entire group has to move, and so does every other 30-person group out there. Suddenly, you're not just surviving, you're fighting over the same shrinking pie on land that's been picked cleaner than a desert carcass. But if you're solo or in a pair, you're sustainable. One rabbit can feed you for two days. You forage slowly, you move light, you're a survivor, not a swarm of locusts. You can stay in one area for months because you aren't devouring the ecosystem faster than it can regenerate. The math on this is called carrying capacity. A piece of land supports X number of people. If you exceed X, everyone starves. Large groups exceed X in days. But you, alone, you're under the line. You're invisible. You're not a threat to the land, so the land doesn't kill you. Okay, you've got food, you've got your trusted partner. What's next? Politics. 30 people need a leader. Someone always steps up. Maybe they're good, maybe they're a tyrant. It doesn't matter. Either way, you are now in a hierarchy, and hierarchies always breed resentment. Someone's taking the bigger share of the food. Someone's sleeping with someone else's partner. Before you know it, you've got factions, infighting, and then blood on the ground over who gets to be the captain of a sinking ship. But when you're solo, you're the leader, the worker, the guard, and the cook. You make every decision and you live with every consequence. There are no power struggles. There's no backstabbing. There's just you, the wasteland, and the cold, hard math. So if you have to have people, what's the optimal number? Two. Two is ideal. Three is pushing it. Four is a crowd. You need people you trust with your life, because that's exactly what you're doing. People with skills you don't have. People who won't get any bright ideas while you're asleep. That's a very short list. Two people can cover each other's backs. Two people can share resources without destroying them. They can move fast, stay quiet, and survive in places a group of 30 would starve in a week. And most importantly, two people can actually trust each other. Because there's no crowd to hide in, no mob to blend into. It's just you and them. If they betray you, there is absolutely nowhere to run. In the end, the math doesn't lie. Large groups consume faster, they attract more danger, they spread disease, and they always, always collapse under their own weight. Solo or in a pair, you are lean, quiet, and sustainable. You are not a target. You are not a resource drain. You are not a ticking bomb of human drama. So when you're out there and you hear voices around a campfire, when you see 30 people smiling and singing, remember the math. Remember the resource curve, the betrayal probability, and just keep walking. Because in the wasteland, the only number that matters is one. Maybe two, but never ever 30. If you make it through the winter alone, congratulations, you survived. If you join the group, well, there's a reason their campfire is so big. They've got a lot of bodies to burn.